everybody, welcome back to this mini series, which has turned into a rather large series, on the operatic voice. In this video, we'll be discussing the baritone voice. As you know, if you're following these videos, I'm writing an opera and so I've been thinking a lot about voice types and voice categories and so I thought I would do more research or just refresh my mind of all these voice types and make a comprehensive lecture series on the voice so the composers can use it. It's useful for me because I do need to make sure I understand all this. And I'm having fun doing this, I'm learning a lot already. Some of it's quite scandalous. Why would you not want to watch this? Now, this isn't supposed to be a definitive overview of voice categorization. It's just a good general guide for myself and other composers and anyone wishing to learn more about the voice or maybe even get a brief introduction to the voice, depending on how good you think this video is. I think it's absurd to categorize voices. It's absurd to apply categories to everything, but we need to do it in order to understand things better. And these categories help us understand the different voice types better. There will be exceptions to every rule in every category, as we will find out. So, without further ado, let's explore the baritone voice. The baritone is the middle-ranged male voice type that lies between bass and tenor. Now I did say it was male, yes we will explore this concept of gendering voice types in a later video, possibly in the trans voices video. But for now it's generally, traditionally assumed to be the middle ranged male voice type. It has a vocal repertoire that lies at approximately A2 to A4 in classical and operatic music. In choral music, the baritone part has lower notes that span from F2 to F4, but the range can extend to either end. Just work with your local baritone when you write your next opera. Now a good bit of etymology, you know I love etymology. The term baritone itself comes from the Greek for baris, meaning deep or low, and tonos for tone. So low tone, deep low tone. Language is a simple thing when you think about it, but it's also a living thing, which is why fixed categories are absurd. Character types now. The baritone sings a variety of roles from unloved husbands oh. to villains and many roles in between. Like those are the two extremes for some reason. Many of the most exciting male roles in opera are sung by baritones, apparently. Italian composer Giuseppe Verdi, in particular, wrote well for baritone, giving it the title roles in operas like Rigoletto, Nabucco and Macbeth. Famous baritone roles include Count Almaviva from Mozart's The Marriage of Figaro, Figaro from Rossini's The Barber of Seville, Marcello from Puccini's La Boheme. For an example of a baritone in action, check out Mozart's Don Giovanni performed by Marius Kricin. And I got this example from sfopera.com. There are seven vocal subtypes within this voice type category, namely hoo hoo hoo, baritone Martin baritone. I did have to look this one up because I was like, Martin? Lyric baritone, cavalier baritone, verdi baritone, dramatic baritone, baritone noble baritone, and bass baritone. We're onto the baritone Martin baritone, which is a light baritone. The baritone Martin baritone is also known as light baritone due to its light voice quality that is almost the same as a tenor, but lacks the G2 to B2 range of other baritones. It has a vocal repertoire that typically starts from C3 to B4. This baritone vocal subtype was named after Jean Blaise Martin and is only seen or heard in French repertoire. Baritone Martin singers can be trained as tenors as they share the same primo passaggio and secondo passaggio of the dramatic tenor and helden tenor. Now we'll look at the helden tenor later on and the dramatic tenor probably. Hang on a minute. Check out the tenor video for more information about the held and tenor and potentially the dramatic tenor. I cannot remember what I said. Now let's cross-reference different resources. So, according to the Opera House Gazetteer, although I think this source got its info from Wikipedia, but anyway, let's just discuss. The baritone Martin has a common range from low C to the A flat above middle C. So that's C3 to A flat 4. It lacks the lower G2 to B2 range that a heavier baritone is capable of and has a lighter, almost tenor-like quality. It's generally seen only in French repertoire. This fach was named after the French singer Jean Blaise Martin. So we've got 
confirmation of that now. It is associated with the rise of the baritone in the 19th century. Martin Martin was well known for his fondness for falsetto singing. And the designation baritone Martin has been used to separate his voice from the Verdi baritone, which carried the chest register further into the upper range. That's really interesting to me because if you think about the vocal positioning of when you speak in the French language, it's kind of back towards the back of the throat and lower down, whereas the Italian is at the tip of the tongue, at the front of the mouse, mouth. And I think this is interesting because it tends to resonate similarly in the vocal... in singing. It is important to note that this voice type shares the primo passaggio and secondo passaggio with a dramatic tenor and held in tenor, as I have already said. And hence the um, baritone Martin could be trained as a tenor. Now let's have a look at the lyric baritone. According to Richard Miller in his helpful book, Securing Baritone, Bass Baritone and Bass Voices, and this is quite a useful book to be fair, most of the opera and art song literatures are written for the lyric baritone. He writes that the lyric baritone is destined to sing the major roles in the lyric theatre. Many of opera's greatest baritone vehicles belong to him. Roles in operas by Rossini, Bellini and Donizetti, a great deal of the French operatic literature and the vast reservoir of the lead and the melody literature are his staples. The bel canto poles of agility and sostenuta are united in his literature. The lyric baritone serves as the backbone of the opera theatre. Let's look at the vocal characteristics and range of the lyric baritone. The lyric baritone is a sweet sounding, mild baritone voice, with higher tessitura than other voices in the baritone range, specifically the dramatic baritone. That makes sense, the dramatic anything is usually lower and deeper and louder. Well, at least deeper and louder. This baritone subtype has a vocal range that resides between A2 and G4. Existing repertoire. The following is existing repertoire for the lyric baritone. We have Count Almaviva from The Marriage of Figaro, Mozart. Guglielmo from Cosi Fan Tutti, Mozart. And Don Giovanni from Don Giovanni, Mozart. All great examples. Now let's look at the Cavalier baritone. A2 to G4. According to becomesingers.com, the Cavalier baritone is characterised by a metallic voice, but can sing in both dramatic and lyric phrases. Its vocal range spans from A2 to G4, and this is practically the same with the lyric baritone, apparently. It has more vocal weight for dramatic phrases alongside the noble baritonal timbre. But let's cross-reference some of the literature just to see what other sources say. And according to IPA source, the Cavalier baritone is the handsome Cavalier of the opera, the Don Giovanni. This fach is sung with an Italian warmth and a ringing top. The character baritone has a more metallic sound and the heavier dramatic repertoire. So this contradicts slightly what becomesingers.com say. It's just subjective, isn't it? IPA say that the character baritone has the metallic sound, whereas becomesingers say that the cavalier, cavalier baritone has a metallic sound, but IPA say that the cavalier baritone has a warmth with a ringing top, which some people could interpret as metallic, I guess. I suggest you ask your local Cavalier baritone for clarification. Now, I am merely compiling research and discussing it. Is that not what a researcher is? I have a PhD, yes, but I am merely a single human, just like the rest of you, by the way. Question everything, don't just trust what you read anywhere, without, like, having a good rational reason for trusting it. Let's look at the baritone noble. The baritone noble, or noble baritone, is characterised by seamless vocalisation and strong declamation. The baritone noble baritone is French for noble baritone and describes a part that requires a noble bearing, smooth vocalisation and forceful declamation, all in perfect balance. This category originated in the Paris Opera, but it greatly influenced Verdi, apparently. And examples of how it influenced Verdi are Don Carlo in Ernani and La Forza del Destino and Count Luna in Il Travatore. The baritone noble is apparently similar to the Cavalier baritone. Presumably it has a similar range as well. I haven't found any uh, solid information about the specific range of the baritone noble. 
I assume it's variable depending on who the person is. But again, these are all general guides, as I've said. Everyone is different with different capabilities. Ask the village baritone noble for more information here. Apparently, an example of a baritone noble role in opera is Figaro in the Barber of Seville. Figaro! Why am I thinking of Homer Simpson? Did he sing a baritone part in that episode? But he was talking to, um, wasn't he talking to Placido Domingo? So that would assume it was a tenor. He was singing a tenor pitch, but I think he sounds more baritone. The voice of Homer Simpson. Anyway, let's look at the bass baritone now. The bass baritone is distinguishable by its lower range, ripely resonant voice, and the capability to easily sing in baritonal tessituras. <laughs> Got it. Its vocal repertoire extends from F2 to F sharp 4. The bass baritone subcategory is further subdivided into lyric bass baritone and dramatic bass baritone. Great. A bass baritone is a tertiary category of male singers between the baritone and bass. Okay, that makes sense. We have the bass, we have the baritone, and we have the bass baritone in between. While this is a voice type in its own right, the bass baritone is a good example of the way these vocal categories can be fluid, allowing singers to perform roles beyond those strictly assigned to their voice type. What did I say? As such, bass baritones often sing bass and baritone roles in addition to specifically bass baritone roles. So they also sing the bass roles and the baritone roles as well as their bass baritone roles. Good to know. Now let's cross-reference some other sources. According to Richard Miller in his helpful book, Securing Baritone, Bass Baritone and Bass Voices, the bass baritone sits between the baritone and the bass. Okay. As we thought. This makes sense. He writes that the bass baritone combines the lyricism of the baritone with the richness of the bass. His timbre may remind of the baritone, or it may take on characteristics of the bass. The graciousness of a smoothly deliberated bass baritone quality is ideal for the projection of respected authority and personal warmth. With the resonance balance of his instrument, the bass baritone is well equipped to sculpture dramatic character portrayals of both serious and comic proportions. Famous bass baritone roles include Escamillo from George Bizet's Carmen, Porgy from George Gershwin's Porgy and Bess, Wotan from Wagner's The Ring of the Nibelung, Der Ring des Nibelungen. Famous bass baritone singers include Bryn Terfel, Ildebrando Darken... Darkangelo, Darkangelo, that's such a beautiful name, and Laurent Nauri. For an example of a bass baritone, check out Verdi's Falstaff performed by Bryn Terfel. Now let's have a look at the dramatic baritone. The dramatic baritone has a fuller, more vibrant and darker voice quality. It has a vocal range spanning from G2 to G4. The lower tessitura of the dramatic baritone roles allow them frequently to be sung by bass baritones. See how the categories of different voice types gets blurred? You can't just apply categories to living, evolving entities. The dramatic baritone is sometimes harsher than a lyric baritone and with a darker quality. It seems to have two related subcategories or side categories. I'm not sure if they come under the overarching dramatic baritone or are they just sort of related? Like I say, these categories just keep getting blurred. Anyway, apparently the dramatic baritone category corresponds roughly to the Helden baritone in the German Fach system, which we'll cover in a moment. There's also some strong correlation to the Verdi baritone, which is generally lighter, but we'll get onto that in a moment as well. Dramatic baritone roles in opera include Jack Kranz from La Fan Fanciula del West. By Puccini. We also have Scarpia from Tosca by Puccini, Iago from Otello Verdi, and Escamillo from Carmen by Bizet. Let's look at the Helden baritone now. A Helden baritone, also known as dramatic bass baritone or Hoche bass, high bass in German, is apparently a German dramatic baritone. So it's essentially a dramatic baritone, but German. Helden baritone, German for heroic baritone, is a Fach, an opera voice type, that is usually associated with the operas of Richard Wagner. It is usually sung by bass baritones such as Hans Hotter, Theo Adam or Bryn Terfel, who was in the last category. Wagner himself calls this voice type Hocher bass, 
high bass rather than baritone. In his opera scores, he distinguishes between the two so that Wolfram in Tarnhäuser is labelled baritone, whereas Wotan in Die Valkyrie is called Hoche Bass. Wolfram is a much more lyrical part than Wotan, and normally the same singer would not have both parts on his repertoire. That's interesting. So is there less versatility in the singing world? Possibly. Well, yeah. Oh, that's fascinating, actually. So held in baritone parts are different from dramatic baritone parts in Italian operas. So in the Italian operas, they've made a distinction between the two. Uh, Italian operas include Scarpia in Puccini's Tosca and Iago in Verdi's Otello. They are different in that the Italian parts have a much lighter tessitura, a higher tessitura, and the vocal line is much more like that of a dramatic tenor. The tenor would be above the baritone. Whereas the Wagner held in baritone is in effect a bass singer with a high register and only occasionally stretches to the high notes of the dramatic Italian baritone. And this is from the Italian opera perspective. Other held in baritone parts include Casper in Weber's Der Freischütz and Johann in Strauss's Salome and the title role in Verdi's Falstaff. I've seen Verdi's Falstaff, it's good. Watched it at the Alhambra, I think. I was 16. The Helden baritone is not a common voice type, but while it does not always require beauty in singing, apparently, <laughs> there is an overwhelming need for expressive declamation and a powerful stage presence. Now let's have a look at the Verdi baritone. Right, the Verdi baritone is a particular type of baritone that is considered a subcategory of a dramatic baritone with a vocal range that extends from G2 to B flat 4. The Verdi baritone is identifiable by its bright tone, colour and higher tessituras than that of the bass baritone. Makes sense. The primo passaggio and secondo passaggio of both Verdi and dramatic baritones are at B flat and E flat respectively. So the primo passaggio is B flat, the secondo passaggio is E flat. Specifically which one? I've not found out yet. So basically the, the, the passaggios are, are the same, the dramatic baritone and the Verdi baritone are the same in terms of the passaggios. The difference, the differenci the differentiation is based more heavily on timbre and tessitura rather than range. Now accordingly, rules that fall into the dramatic baritone category tend to have a slightly lower tessitura than typical Verdi baritone rules, only rising above an F at the moments of greatest intensity. It is important to note that for all intents and purposes, a Verdi baritone is simply a dramatic baritone with a greater ease in the upper tessitura. Makes sense. As we've said, the Italians tend to be higher, generally, in terms of their categorization of the voices. So, um, Verdi baritone roles are sent approximately a minor third higher. Verdi baritone roles. Than what you would assume a dramatic baritone role to approximate, in terms of range. Now, because the Verdi baritone is sometimes used as a subset of the dramatic baritone, some singers perform roles from both sets of repertoires. Again, it makes sense. In, <laughs> according to Richard Miller in his helpful book, as I keep saying, Securing Baritone, Bass Baritone and Bass Voices, in today's opera world, the most coveted low voice male instrument is the Verdi baritone. Verdi expanded expectations of the elite baritone voice. The Verdi baritone must have a powerful, rangy instrument. It must have size and power that competes with full orchestral sound, authority in complex ensembles and duets, the ability to present a low range that is capable of projection, the ability to keep up a sustained voice media tessitura, and an upper range capable of brilliance and power. The category includes not only the operas of Verdi, but of most of the composers who came after him. It includes a large portion of the baritone roles of the late 19th century Italian and French opera repertoires. The baritone verismo school of singing, so fully exploited by composers of the late 19th and 20th centuries, became the heart of the operatic literature of the low-voiced male. It is the property of the Verdi baritone. Here we have Miller claiming that the singer dictated the development of the music and not the composer. Yes, I get that, but it's most likely a dialectical relationship between the two things. Right, summary. So what have we discussed in this video then? Anyway, so we've had a look at the baritone voice and all its subcategories, and its subcategories include the baritone Martin, the lie baritone, the lyric baritone, the Cavalier Baritone, the Verdi Baritone, the Baritone Noble, the Bass Baritone, the Helden Baritone and the Dramatic Baritone. Stay tuned for the next video in this series where we'll be exploring the bass singing voice. 
I'll see you there. Just work with your local baritone when you're ready. Hello, are my six inches from the mic? I don't think so, because I don't have a good setup. I'm poor. It is associated with the rise of the baritone in the. <laughs> now. Oh, bless me.